few months ago, I did a video on time blocking where I compared Tick Tick and Fantastical, and a bunch of people in the comments asked why I used both. And the reason is Fantastical isn't really good enough at tasks, and Tick Tick isn't really a good enough calendar. Fast forward to today, and there's a new time blocking app I've been trying out for the past month. Let's see if AkiFlow can replace both Tick Tick and Fantastical. In my experience, AkiFlow takes a fundamentally different approach to task management with its inbox-driven workflow. Basically, everything comes into your one inbox, and then you can decide what to do with it from there. You're probably going, Brandon, every task manager works that way. And the difference here is that in AkiFlow, you can have tasks coming in from everywhere. If you've got an email that's going to take some time to respond to, you can start it and have it automatically come into AkiFlow. If someone has a question in Slack that's going to take some time to research, Add it to your saved items in Slack, and it'll automatically pull into AkiFlow. There are a ton of other integrations too, but those are the ones that I actually get a lot of mileage out of. The other key difference is how the inbox works. Unlike TickTick, -tick, the inbox in AkiFlow is based on whether a task has a slotted date and time. And so you move things out of your inbox by either planning it for a specific day or snoozing it to a day in the future when you want it to land back in your inbox for reevaluation. I love this because it means I can spend less time managing which list a task should go in and instead worry more on when should I do this task. So it goes really well with this Oliver Berkman quote from 4,000 Weeks where he says, so the point isn't to eradicate procrastination, but to choose more wisely what you're going to procrastinate on. So that's kind of how I use AkiFlow. I figure out which things I want to do this week so that I can focus on what matters and things that I either don't have time for or need to reevaluate, I can snooze to a future planning period. So each morning when I get up, I open up AkiFlow and, and call through my inbox and figure out, is there anything that I need to add to today's plan? I mentioned you drag things onto your calendar, and while you can do that, the best thing about AkiFlow is that you can control the entire app completely from your keyboard. And this enables you to do things like clearing your inbox incredibly quickly. So here's my real life inbox that has 22 items from yesterday and let's go through it and deal with all those tasks. So the first thing is I need to put into my accounting system some expenses for the rental property, and I'm not gonna do that today, I'm gonna do that tomorrow. So I'm gonna press P, and then I can just hit TOM for tomorrow. This all has natural language, so. All right, next thing up is Diana from Scrintle sent me a video. I can look at that at 9 p.m. tonight, so I'm gonna press P again, then I can say 9 p.m., and then that'll go to 9 p.m. Greg needs something at work, I'll snooze that so I can press S to snooze it and that'll bring it back into my inbox on a different day. So on Monday morning, I'm gonna take a look at that. Um, another thing, so if I press enter, it's gonna pull up the task itself. And one of the things I wanna do is write a list of people I consume content from and that I should connect with. So I'm gonna do that tomorrow. Don't know what time yet, but tomorrow. So currently I'm in day view, but if I wanted to see more than just the current day, I can do that in a number of different ways. If I press two, I can see the next two days. If I press three, I can see the next three days. If I press W, I can see um, the current week. I can then use plus and minus to move forward a week with plus or back a week with minus, and I can always press D to get back to today. I don't really need to do anything with this, so I'm just gonna press E to mark it as done, and so I need to call me utility, so I can press P and say Monday at 12 p.m. A reminder to myself to look at the best ways to find a podcast partner. So it doesn't look like I have time to do it today, but I do have some time in the evening tomorrow. So I'm gonna plan that for tomorrow, T-O-M, at 9 p.m., and you'll see that slot into 9 p.m. Because of this opinionated inbox approach, I find myself actually triaging my inbox each morning, which I almost never did in TickTick. -tick. The other thing I've noticed myself doing is I'm actually planning out my week in advance. Historically, I've never been someone to strictly plan my week ahead, but I find it's happening almost naturally with AkiFlow. For the last nine months, I've been trying to set a daily highlight each day, something that if accomplished, you could consider today a success. In AkiFlow, you can indicate that a given task is a goal, and it'll set this purple outline. And so I mark all of my daily highlights this way, and it's really nice when I look out over my week and I can see that I'm slotting in important work. But you can associate links with common tasks. So one of the things I try and do every afternoon is product review all the tickets that are outstanding. So I have to remember to go to Jira and go to a specific board, and instead I can just copy that link into my product review task that I repeat every weekday. And so then I just highlight that task inside of AkiFlow, press O, it'll launch into that board in Jira. 
So for as much as I love AkiFlow, it's not perfect, and it probably makes sense to go through a few of the cons. First of which is, like most other task managers, it can be a bit of an attention monster. So if I want to focus and get something done, I probably need to hide it or else I run the risk that I might pull myself into another task and get distracted. Luckily, they have this nifty global keyboard shortcut that lets you toggle it open or if it's already open to toggle it back closed. So I have that set to hyper and space. And so at any point I can open up AkiFlow, do what I need to do and then hide it away so that it can't distract me. Another con that I run into is AkiFlow doesn't support images natively, so you can't paste an image into a task. And that's a big bummer for me because as a product designer, what I will often do is take a screenshot, annotate some quick notes on it, and then copy it back to my clipboard and add it to a task to follow up with someone. This worked nicely in TickTick, but unfortunately it doesn't work in AkiFlow. So I'm kind of back to the way I was doing this in Things 3, which also didn't support images. Another thing you might find yourself missing is that there's no mobile app, at least yet. I've chatted with the team over at AkiFlow and they're about to start the beta in the next few weeks, but it's unfortunately not there yet. They do have this web-based quick capture that you can load in the browser on your phone, and that's pretty decent for grabbing a couple of quick tasks. But because they integrate so well with other apps, what I've done instead is actually started using Todoist. And so I use Todoist on mobile to capture, and then AkiFlow will pull in all my Todoist tasks into my inbox. The last con I have is, is price, and there's, there's no real getting around it. AkiFlow is a bit pricey at $15 a month. When I first came across it, I was really excited about what I saw, but I was hesitant to give it a try for fear of liking it. Ultimately, I did decide to give it a shot, and I can say if your time is valuable and you can afford it, AkiFlow is the best way I've found to plan your time. Hey, thanks for making it to the end of the video. If you want to give AkiFlow a shot, I've got a link down in the description that'll extend your trial from seven days to a full month to see if it'll work for you. If you liked the video, then hit the thumbs up. And if you want to see more like it, then hit subscribe and the bell icon and YouTube will let you know when I post in the future. Thanks again and have a great day.